Welcome back. Yes, there is a third type of communication situation. But before we discuss that, why don't you watch this first? To promote an effective partnership with the community, both where you are assigned and where you reside. The community as the main pillar. What have you done for the list of my brethren? Do you have the answer? Thank you. How different are those situations from the earlier communication situation we showed you? Obviously, the people in the situation you have just seen were reaching a larger group or audience as receivers. This is what we call public communication. In this type of communication, a speaker addresses many people on a more important level, thus affecting the communicating behavior of both the speaker and the receiver. How different is this from intrapersonal and interpersonal types of communication? Public communication aims at reaching a larger group or audience. The speaker has a little idea about the kind of audience he or she is going to talk to. Listeners in public audiences seldom heckle nor are likely to participate openly with their own messages, pro or con. Listeners give more subdued feedback which take the form of applause or limited facial and body movements. Sometimes even these few feedback cues are absent, as at large political rallies. The speaker sees only a blur of faces in the far boundaries of the crowd. The voice reaches the listeners through microphones. But the speaker, for example, on television or radio, may never hear or see their overt responses. The setting in public communication is more formal than in intrapersonal and interpersonal communication situations. Does public communication have a place in the classroom? Thank you for making me your president. And I promise you that I'll do my best, but we have to work as one. I'm sure you have engaged your students in such activities, especially when you ask them to present research reports, survey, or interview results and the like. Now that we have come to know the various types of communication situations, we are now ready to discuss the various reasons why people, teachers, and students alike fail to communicate effectively. I'd like you to watch this. You know what I don't understand, Jack? I don't understand love. Who does? Explain love to me, Jack. You can't explain love. I can recommend a novel, or a movie, or a song, or a poem, but I can't explain love. Try, Jack. Try to explain love. Well, uh, say I happen to see this cute little girl walk by and I... Why does she have to be cute, Jack? Huh? Can't someone fall in love with a girl who isn't cute and has freckles and a big nose? Explain that, Jack! Well, maybe you're right. Let's just say then that I happen to see this girl walk by who has a great big nose and I didn't say a great big nose Jack you not only can't explain love actually you can't even talk about it that was funny wasn't it what seemed to be the problem well the girl simply could not get what Jack was trying to tell her he confused the girl with his different perception of love. Why do people seem to fail to communicate effectively? There are several barriers that block communication. 
why don't you watch the situations and try to identify the communication barrier which thwarts or blocks communication. Leza, do you have a sewing machine in your house? What do you mean? I mean like this. Oh, you mean sewing machine. Yes, 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 sewing. Why did Lisa fail to understand Cindy at the beginning of the conversation? You're correct. Cindy had regional pronunciation problems which are difficult to correct. Evidently, the barrier that blocked communication is language related. And in that situation, it was mispronunciation of the words that delayed the understanding of Cindy's message. Language barrier blocks communication. We expect our language to solve problems merely because we use what we think are the right words. Unfortunately, our listeners may have an entirely different thought or solution in mind. And our words do not mean the same thing to them. Words by themselves do not have meaning. Meaning depends upon the user. The meaning of words ultimately remains with the speaker, and he knows what he intended those to mean. Language barriers can occur in the following ways. Mistaking connotative meanings for denotative. Confusing one person's use of a term with our perception of the term. Overgeneralizing. And taking words out of context. Let me crystallize these forms by watching the following communication situation. John, aren't we taking the lift? I can hardly walk. What do you mean? I mean, will you make me walk without taking the lift? What is a the lift, Danny? What went wrong? We will know the answer to this after a short break. Stay tuned. <laughs>